Hello friends, welcome to NF3DS Max Tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcare.com and today we are going to continue uh, modeling this interior scene. Uh, I want to uh, create the shelf and the books uh, in this tutorial. So let's get right ahead. Uh, I want to just select the wall uh, on the back side, like uh, the uh, extra piece that's coming out of the wall actually. And I'm, I'm going to hit Alt Q to isolate it. Then I'm going to hit F and Alt W to maximize this viewport and hit G to get rid of the grids. Now, first thing I want to do is to create a box that will um, symbolize the symbolize the um, ga uh, gap or the shelf dimensions, let's say. And the dimensions for this box should be 100 for the width. Um, 50 for the length and 45 for the height. Okay, maybe we could do this a little bit longer or narrower maybe. Actually, 50 is good because uh, some books will be in A4 size, I guess, and it they will be 30 centimeters. So yeah, it will look better with 50 centimeters of height. Uh, let's end isolate to see where this box is in our scene, in our camera, from our camera. Uh, I guess this is a good location, maybe uh, up a little bit. Uh, we can see the Z height from here as well, but uh, it should be at a height that you can reach with your uh, hands. So it shouldn't be too high. I guess uh, 170 is good. I guess that's it. Okay, maybe you could just pull this uh, at this side and um, let's do that as well. If I hit Alt A, uh, this was the shortcut for align and click on the wall. Then you can see that in the uh, we can choose to move this in the X axis and we can just put the minimum point to the minimum point. That way it will be aligned with the left side here. And then you can just turn this to a relative mode and input 100, for example, uh, for an exact dimension, maybe this is too much, minus 50. Yeah, 50 centimeters from the left side is good, I guess. Okay, now let's uh, isolate these again. Uh, what I want to do is I want to just add an edit poly modifier on top. Hit Alt 1, which is the shortcut for um, shortcut for Swift Loop. It's in here. You can see that it's under Modeling tab, Swift Loop. And let's just input some loops in here. Uh, you don't need to be that exact, but I guess it should be, it should fit better than uh, this. You can double click on an edge to select the uh, edge loop and just move it the X axis. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. Now I'm going to hit two to get out of the edge mode and get rid of the box. Uh, it was just a placeholder. I'm going to hit four for uh, selecting polygons and I'm going to select this one, extrude this inwards. Okay. Let's extrude it minus 25 centimeters. Okay. All right, now, uh, I want to apply a chamfer to this wall as well. Uh, it shouldn't be that uh, that big of a chamfer. I guess I should change the amount to 0.2 or something. And also it creates a weird gradient on the surface as you can see. You can just change smoothing. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I guess this one. You can change smoothing output to smooth chamfers only. That way you will have a flat surface uh, on the front side. You will only have smoothing on the corners here. Okay, so this is good enough, I guess. Let's uh, get on with the uh, books. Now, what I want to do for the books is I'm going to go to the top view and create a box. Uh, let's set, you can uh, search for dimensions online. Like let's search for book dimensions. And uh, I want to show you that you can easily find uh, what these dimensions should be. If you are using inches, you can uh, check these out. Uh, if you are uh, not using inches and you can't find a metric uh, system values, you can just Google these as well. Like uh, let's say 
7 by 10 inches. Let's type in 10 inch 2 centimeters and you will see uh, right away that it's 25 centimeters. Um, so you can use these dimensions. Let's uh, create one a little bit larger than this because I want to I want uh, I want to create three different sizes and this will be the largest. So let's type in uh, put in 30 for width. Uh, 22 for length and 5 centimeters, maybe even 4 for the height. Okay, this will be our base for uh, the book. And then I'm going to add an edit poly modifier on top. I'm going to hit 4 and select these faces, get rid of them. And I'm going to hit 2 to select this edge in here. Actually, before I continue modeling, let's do our usual thing. Like set the color to black and the material to gray. That way I will be able to see what's going on, see the shape a little bit better. I'm going to hit 2 again. Uh, select this one and hit ring from here and hit connect. We could also use swift loop. Uh, you uh, realize that I sometimes use sweet loop, sometimes use uh, connect for these things. The reason I'm using connect here is I want to create um, three uh, edges that have uh, equal spacing in between. So it's a little bit weirder to do this with a swift loop. So I guess this is uh, what I go for uh, when I'm trying to create these uh, equal spaced uh, edges. Then I will just pull them in the y axis a little bit. And pull the middle one a little bit more, and that way you will have these uh, this curved uh, uh, edge, I guess, C curved side. Yeah. Now let's uh, add a shell modifier. Uh, I wanna click straighten uh, corners, and I wanna input point two for the width or outer amount then i can add a chamfer as well uh, but this chamfer should be very small like 0 0.02 or something uh, you could leave uh, you could leave a smooth entire object for this because uh, yeah the book uh, could have a curved surface right uh, let's say this is a big uh, a good covered book and it could have one of those but if you don't want to uh, see this, you can also choose smooth chamfers only as well. Then I'm going to hit Ctrl V to create a copy of this. Let's delete the shell uh, and the uh, chamfer and also the edit poly actually. Yeah, because uh, I want to create this inner side of the book so i'm going to add an edit, uh, another edit poly modifier let's hit two and create uh sorry not chamfer but connect create these three edges as again uh, i can hit left uh, l to go to the left view and pull these again we could also use the original curve but whatever for now let's just do it like this and then i want to just choose these edges Vertex, vertices, pull them in. Uh, actually, let's do it for both sides with scale so that we have equal spacing in here and here. And also, let's move these in as well. Yep, you can see that we have created one book. Uh, you can use chamfer here as well, but I, I'm not going to do that because I want these edges sharp. Okay, this is our first book. Let's group it. I'm going to go to group, group, book one, and let's create two more copies of this. As I told you, I want to create three different kinds of uh, books. And I'm going to open this. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to go to edit poly, uh, uh, move this in like, you can uh, see how, I'm, how much I move this in the X axis. Uh, let's move it in like, four centimeters and do the same thing for this 
And I also want this to be a little bit thinner and uh, let's first move this in as well. I guess two centimeters is good. Yep. Okay. And then make this a little bit thinner as well. Uh, let's go to edit poly. Uh, I don't recommend you to scale this like this because you will see that if you do it like this, uh, these edges get thinner than these ones and it will look uh, skewed. It, will, it won't look realistic uh, if you do it like this. So what I recommend you to do is go to the edit poly mode, select the, actually let's do this with uh, element. I can just isolate to show this a little bit better. Uh, I can say, select the whole element and then scale this down. If you do that, then the, uh, the shell will be the same all over, as you can see, because you are not scaling chamfer, you are only scaling the base model. Oh, okay, also we can uh, do the shell a little bit thinner as well. Let's go with 0.50. Okay, I can just select this as well and just scale this down too. Okay, let's select these books and isolate them again. Okay, let's create a third type of book. I, this time I don't want this curved uh, edge, so I'm going to just select this. Let's isolate this and hit L for the left view. And then I can open this, select this and go to edit poly. Hit one for the vertex mode. Uh, disable the show and result button. And I can just move these in. Uh, what you can do here is you can just select all these vertices and scale them in. And you will see that it, this will make, create a flat edge in here. And then again, the same thing for the, these vertices. Okay. And let's make this the thinnest book. Uh, so I want to just select this again, scale this again, and scale this as well. And maybe this book doesn't have a hard cover, so I can pull these in, pull these in, and these as well. I only want uh, just a little bit of a thickness, like 0.1, maybe even uh, narrower, but for now let's leave it. Yeah, this is a flat edged book. Okay, let's uh, close this one as well. So we have three, we should have three type of books. Let's check them out. And I want to select and isolate this as well. Yeah, you can see that we have one, two, three, and they are named book one, book two, and book three. Okay. Now, uh, again, let's go to our preview uh, or our reference image. You can see that we have uh, a lot of the, uh, books in here. Uh, so let's uh, create some copies of this, these books we have created, and uh, just place them side by side, uh, make them look like this. So let's rotate this one, rotate this one, and this one. What I'm going to do before I start to put these uh, side by side is I want to go to uh, select one of the books, go to hierarchy, effect pivot only, and I want the I want to place this pivot point to the bottom of this book, so I can just rotate them easily, and uh, I I think I can align them uh, easier with, that way. So what I want to do is I want to hit Alt A again to go to the Align tool and select the book itself. Now I'm going to uh, select the Z position and I want the pivot point to go to the minimum point. If you are missing or not clearly understanding what I'm doing with Align, uh, you can go ahead and watch the um, actual lesson about Align. Just search uh, CGK Align tool on YouTube or uh, you can just go back in this uh, playlist. Then I can just uh, rotate this uh, pivot point as well. I want the Z, uh, Z axis to look up. Let's do the same uh, for this book. Okay. 
okay now i want to disable the um, effect pivot only now what we can do is we can just create some copies of these uh, i want uh, these to have like three copies side by side let's say this is a series or, or, or something so they all look the same uh, it shouldn't look weird uh, that way and let's uh, rotate this a little bit as well okay then let's uh, move this in and rotate this one maybe pull this out a little bit And if I hit F, I can see that this is a little bit uh, um, elevated. And also what I want to do is I want to disable the angle snaps and move, rotate these a little bit, uh, give this, these rotations a little bit of a jitter, I guess. They shouldn't all be exactly the same, right? So what, what you can do is you can just pull this out a little bit and move, uh, rotate this in. Do the same thing for this one. And you can see that they are, they look much more scattered this way. And let's pull these up a little bit so that they are in the same levels again. And yeah, and the rest is uh, just scattering these around. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to do that. And let's uh, use our third book type. And let's create some copies of this as well. And I can just randomize these as well. Okay, I guess for now this is good enough. Let's pull, put them uh, to the shelf and see how they are uh, looking. I can just select all these, go to group, group, and let's call these books. And move this in the front view. Let's move this up. Put it there, yeah. And let's pull these in. I guess I can just pull these vertices down a little bit as well. It, it looked a little bit too high for me. And if I just look at it from here, I guess they all look fine. Uh, maybe pull these down just a little bit more because I don't want the bottom sides to be visible. And yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, um, I guess this was useful. We have uh, done with the books. Uh, we are done with the books and we are going to go through different things uh, in the later lessons. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. Uh, if you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.